Hello, welcome back to Learn Economy. Today we are going to understand the idea of nature and scope of economics. Let's get started. Before understanding the idea of nature and scope of economics, it's important to say what is economics. We have learned so many theories, so many ideas, so many concepts, and so many topics in the arena of economics. I know this is a very simple thing to tell you regarding what is economics but when it comes to nature and scope of economics the idea of economics is also very important you need to define it first then only you can come to the nature and scope of the very same also we could see that the nature and scope of economics is something which has been identified as an important arena even for several several competitive examinations this is so because you just need to understand the base first, then only you can come to the higher level ideas, complicated theoretical part of the same. Having said so, let's answer the question what is economics. I'm not going to the give it in different definitions given by different different economists. As you all know, there have been various various definitions given by various various prominent economists like Arthur Marshall, Adam Smith, Ricardo. Samuelson, people like that, and I'm not taking you to that little thing now because my intention now is to give you a very short understanding of what is economics and the nature and scope of the very same. So, that is the only thing that we are going to do here. Let's have an idea, a very short idea of what is economics. As we all know, economics will deal with the study of scarcity. Why? Because we know that all our wants are unlimited. All to everybody will be having wants, all have wants, and these wants are unlimited. And you could see that in order to satisfy these wants, we want resources, and these resources are limited. Whether we are dealing with the resource of a nation um, and the needs and wants of a nation, the very same thing apply. So, this will be having a lot of implications for the use of resources. How do we use resources so when we have unlimited needs and wants? So, here comes the role of prioritizing things. And how do we prioritize? All these things are studied under economics. It will deal with production, it will deal with distribution, it will deal with welfare. So, a variety of complex, complex aspects are covered in the arena of economics, all revolve around these things. There are having different other definitions, like it, uh, it is being told by Smith that economics is a study of wealth. And this is what he has tell Toki has told in his wealth of nations. And Marshall considers it as something again different from what Smith has considered. Samuelson considers it as different from what these two people have considered. So everybody will be looking economics from a different perspective. That doesn't tell that any of these people are wrong. Only they are considering different different aspects and they are giving emphasis to that aspect. So economics deal with actually a whole lot of complex complex issues which are very much vital to economy. Now, having said so, we could see that economics economy, economics is a subject. This is something that has evolved in the 19th century and nowadays it has become a very very significant part in modern times. So it, it covers from the problems aspects from a very short, small shop to a country, from a person in the household to a nation. So in all these cases, economics ideologies, economics ideas could be used for the efficient running. And when it comes to business, no business can flourish without applying the principles of economics. So economics is something which is very much extensive and varied. And moving to nature and scope, this would depend upon interaction of various various economic agents, and this limit the ways in which economies work as well.
Now, having said a very short introduction regarding economics, now we can come to the actual topic of discussion, the nature and scope. To start with scope, we could see that it refers to the extent to which something deals with or the extent to which something is concerned. When we say so, the way most basic way to consider economics is that involved the consumption of goods and services. Also, we could see that economics involved the production. Economics involved distribution. So many, so many aspects are covered in the arena of economics. So, to be something which is very simple, this could be the scope could be understood by considering economics as microeconomics and macroeconomics. In the case of microeconomics, we could see that it deals with the study of individual economic units. So here we deal with a single individual. We deal with a single firm. We deal with a simple industry. We deal with a simple uh, household. We can deal with a single market. Things like that. Also, pricing a single product. The behavior of a single consumer, the behavior of a single firm, things like that are understood in terms of microeconomics because it's concerned about the individual economic units such as producers, consumers, etc. So, for the very same reason, we do have certain important topics that are covered in uh, the arena of microeconomics. This is something that we have already discussed the idea of elasticity. So, here it shows how much would be the change in quantity as a result of change in some factor that would influence the quantity. We can have elasticity of supply, we can have elasticity of demand. So, this elasticity can be a also price elasticity, something called income elasticity would be there, something called cross elasticity would be there. It all depends upon the particular scenario that we are considering. Again, the theory of production. Here we are connecting output with inputs. You could see that various combination, various factors are combined together to form output. Now, cost of production. In order to produce output, the producer would be incurring some cost. Now, monopoly. It's a market structure with a single seller. Then you have oligopoly with few sellers, again a market structure. Here we can also go for macroeconomics. And unlike in the case of microeconomics, macroeconomics deal with overall production, overall consumption. So it considers the case of economy as a whole. And for the very same reason, we will be having some concepts like national income, GDP, GNB, things like that. The various important topics that we cover here include business cycles, national budget, unemployment situation, money supply case. So, everywhere we are going for the aggregates. That is all about macroeconomics. Going to the some uh, important topics that we cover here involves the idea of growth, which can be measured in terms of GDP or some other indicator. Then business cycles. Business cycle involves the cyclical pattern of the movement of GDP of a nation. So it shows how it takes the different phases like depression, recession, then recovery, boom. So I have not written in the proper order, but you will be having something which is there called business cycle. Okay, I, I just have written like if you have severe depression, what have what uh, as a result of some policy changes, you 
that can be reduced to your resolution. So uh, again, after some policy changes, that will be there will be some recovery, and after much more effective implementation of some policy, that can happen. But this won't be the clear cut way of looking at things every time. Sometimes the depression depression will not. As a result of policy, lead to recession. It will definitely can take recovery after that. So uh, you can see that boom after boom for a certain period, there would be rec something called recession, and it is with some recession later it go to depression. And so there can be different path. In the business cycle, but anyway, even if it is depression, the economy won't stay on depression forever. If it is recession, the economy will not stay on recession forever. If it is boom, the economy will not stay on boom forever. And again, in the case of recovery, it won't be every time recovery. There would be changes, but the the actual path would be like this. This is the. This is standard path, but there will be differences. That is why I told that I am not going for the proper order here. Now, coming to unemployment, the famous Phillips curve explains the trade-off between inflation and unemployment. We could see inflation here. Deflation would be also sometimes happening in the economy. The prices can fluctuate; it can increase or come down. So, all these are studied in the arena of macroeconomics. So. We could see about micro and macro economics case. Now we can consider the nature part of economics. With respect to this, we have to consider that there exist two two different fields. One considers economics as a science, and the other one considers economics as an art. Here we have to consider that economics is both a science and art. Both science and art. If asked why, I'll give you explanation. With respect to art, art is usually considered as an important field that deals with expressing ideas, application of skills, the idea of creativity is there, pragmatism is there, so things like that are there. And in the case of economics, also we are using a lot much of imagination. We are using a so much of assumption. And this is done in the context of reality, and we are not going for any fleeting idea here. We are always having a goal in economics. We go for role-oriented movements in order to attain an end. And we do have several several theories in economics which would discuss how to part, how to take part in attaining what we need. So we deal with the practical application of all the textual knowledge. textbook knowledge is being applied here so economics is an art now why economics is a science science usually involve the establishment of cause effect relationship we go for something quantifiable we go for something proven we go for something that could be experimented in the case of economics also we do have certain quantifiable aspects For example, elasticity. We can express this in the form of graphs, charts, and also there exists so much of method to forecast things. We could we could go for prediction, and until this, we can classify economics both as a positive science and normative science. How positive? Because it's it deals with Laying down a fact, so it deals with what it is. And in the case of normative science, we deal with value judgment. So we deal with what ought to be, what it should be, things like that. So economics at the same time is positive and normative. 
In short, what I can tell you is that regarding the nature and scope of economics, it is something that is very much complex. It covers almost all the central issues of an economy, and this subject plays a very important role when it comes to enlightening many thoughts of great great economists. That's all about today. Thank you for watching. You can like, share, and subscribe to this channel for more videos. You can be a part of our our free telegram community by clicking on the link given in the description box also you can download the learn economy app for that also i'll be providing the link in the description box that's it thank you for watching